On this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, Jared reviews the new Super Nintendo Land at Universal Studios Hollywood. Welcome to this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer, and today we are going to be taking you to Universal Studios Hollywood and to the new Super Nintendo Land. This land obviously opened within the last year. We have not had a chance to review it yet. So what we did is we took a quick weekend trip out to LA and went to Super Nintendo Land so that we could talk to you guys about it on the podcast tell you about all the new and exciting things happening over at Universal Studios Hollywood and tell you how to access the land, how to ride the new Mario Kart ride and really make the most of your day at Universal Studios Hollywood. And in fact, this will change the rope drop strategy for some people. And we'll talk about that more towards the end of the episode. So you're definitely going to want to stay tuned and listen to that. But before we dive in, I do want to ask wherever you're listening to us, go ahead and click that pause button whether this is in the podcast or on YouTube, and click that subscribe button so that way you're going to get this content delivered into your inbox each and every single week, and you're going to be up to date on the latest Disney and Universal tips and tricks, and you're going to have all the coolest content that's out there. And then we do want to ask if there's any tips or tricks that have saved you some time or money, throw us a couple dollars over at Patreon. The link is down in the description below. And by supporting the show, you're going to help keep the show going, and we really do appreciate our supporters. In addition to that, when you go to Patreon, you'll see at our top tier, we do have our biggest Disney tip or trick ever that will tell you how to skip the lines at most of the Disney parks. So we do encourage you that if you want to have access to that tip or trick, do subscribe at the highest level so that way you can get access to it and know that it will only be available at that highest level. And we will not be putting this on our general podcast because it's too good of a tip and trick and too good of a secret. And we don't want the word to get out there across the board. So this is only for our top level subscribers. So we do want to ask uh, for your support there. Also, you can see over my shoulder, we have a cool water bottle. The I can do this all day tip of the day icon on there. It's the Captain America shield with the castle in the middle and the Disney head inside of that. Uh, If you like our merchandise, again, it's not branded with the podcast. It's just that I can do this all day logo that's out there. You can find that over at Etsy. Again, that link is down in the podcast description below. And we really love our merchandise. I can say when we were in Orlando this past summer, there were a lot of times that we wore those shirts into the parks and we got tons of compliments on them. And a lot of people were asking us, where can you get them? And of course, we were directing them back to our Etsy site. Uh, That's a really cool feature out there as well. And again, those are down in the description below so you can check those out. If you are watching us on the YouTube version, you can see on the video, I've changed my background up a little bit. I now have a really cool saltwater fish tank behind me. If you guys didn't know this about me, I absolutely love animals and especially exotic and tough to keep animals, difficult to keep animals. I have had almost every type of lizard that's out there. I've had saltwater tanks in the past, and now uh, I've got two saltwater tanks. I've got this cool one with a, of course, a clownfish that looks like Nemo and an anemone in there and some other fish. This one's really small, but behind me over here to my side, which you guys can't see on the video, we have a new larger tank that has an octopus in it. So I like keeping those kinds of exotic pets and animals. And so I've changed my office up a little bit and I'm excited to have that and excited that you guys get to see that if you're watching the YouTube format. Of course, if you're listening to us on the podcast format, just know that it's a small tank behind me on our bookshelf and I really enjoy it. So it's something that gives me a little peace and serenity throughout my day as I work here from this desk. So today we're going to talk to you about Super Nintendo Land, the newest edition over at Universal Studios Hollywood. And if you didn't know, Universal is building a third park in Orlando. And at that third park, they're going to have a few different lands, including Super Nintendo Land there and the Ministry of Magic for Harry Potter. So there's a lot of really cool things coming. My land that I'm anticipating the most is they're going to have a classic Universal Monsters land. That's why I'm wearing my classic Universal Monsters shirt today from RSVLTS, Roosevelt's. And on this shirt, you've got the Wolfman, you've got the Invisible Man, Dracula, Frankenstein, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Bride of Frankenstein. And I love those classic Universal movies, so I'm really excited to see what they do with this land. And they closed the Monsters Cafe over at Universal Studios Orlando. And I'm really hopeful that they reopen it over at the new park that they're going to be building, because that was one of my favorite restaurants in all of the Orlando parks put together. So 
I absolutely love the theming and the decor. And then the food was really good too. Fingers crossed that that comes back over there. But today we've got, uh, when we talk about Super Nintendo World, we've actually got two, I can do this all day, tips of the day at the end. In addition to our uh, new revised rope drop strategy for Universal Studios Hollywood. So you're definitely going to want to stick around for the full episode today to get that. But I will tell you when we went, we just went a couple weeks ago. It was the busiest I have ever seen Universal Studios Hollywood ever. And I've been there a lot. So to say that is significant, meaning that there were a ton of people there. It was very, very crowded. Of course, it was over Labor Day weekend. So I know that had something to do with it, but it was the busiest I've ever seen it. And for a lot of our listeners, especially if you're close to my demographic and age group, we grew up playing Nintendo. So this was a really cool experience for my wife and I, having grown up with the original NES system and playing the original Super Mario Brothers and getting a chance to see the land that was designed after it. It was a lot of fun. So it was a really great experience for us. And then my daughter, she's obviously played it on the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo Wii. And so she's grown up with it as well. Uh, so we all had a great time there. Adding this land to Universal Studios Hollywood has really changed the dynamics of the park. And that's why we're going to revise a rope drop strategy for you at the end. But the way that this works is you're going to pay your normal park admission, but you can also now purchase early admission for an additional fee into Super Nintendo World. So I will encourage you, if you are going to Universal Studios Hollywood and you've got your tickets all ready to go, still go back online and check out those early admission tickets. And definitely, if you can, do it. That is definitely 100% the way to go. We decided last minute to take this trip and those tickets were already sold out for the day that we were going to be there. So we were not able to buy those. And I really wish that we had the opportunity to get them because they weren't that much more expensive. They were about 20 to $30 per person for the day to get one hour early admission into Super Nintendo land. And if we were able to do that, we would have been able to knock out that land and then get back into the rest of the park before the rest of the people got into the park. And that would have really changed our strategy. If you don't get one, it's not a huge deal. We didn't. We were still able to get in there and we were able to do everything we wanted to do that day. But it does make your day a little bit easier if you are able to get it. So as we go through this episode, I'm going to assume you did not get one. And the reason is, is if you did, I'm going to tell you, obviously, you need to be there early. Go there at 8 a.m., which is when they did that early access for Super Nintendo Land. You want to be front of the line. You want to get in there first thing in the morning and go, obviously, to Super Nintendo Land and go knock out the Mario Kart ride and do the fun things that are around that land. And then by nine or so, you want to get out of there because that's where everyone else is going to be heading at that point. And then you're going to be ahead of the whole crowd going through the rest of the park and you're going to have the really short waits at all the other rides. So you're definitely, if you're able to do it, but if not, like us, then you're going to be getting there at normal rope drop time. So know that when you go in there at normal rope drop time, they're going to hold you at the top of the escalators over by the Simpsons land. It is going to be very crowded. And then they're going to walk you down the escalators. If you're familiar with the park, there are steps off to the left-hand side. They do have those blocked off. You are not allowed to run down the steps. And rightfully, if you have a crowd that big and people are trying to run to get to the land and as many steps to get to the lower lot as possible, you're going to have people tripping everywhere and it's going to be a mess. So they want everyone to take the escalators. They do monitor it very closely. They have cast members all the way down to the bottom. And of course, they don't want you running to get in there. So you're going to go down the escalators. It takes about five minutes to get down those escalators and to get back to the back of the park. And if you're familiar with the park, Super Nintendo Land is back by the Transformers ride. You're going to go back towards that and hang a left. And of course, you're going to see it as you're coming down uh, the escalators anyway. So it's really easy to find but you're going to be going down that uh, direction. Now, do know when you get into the Super Nintendo world, it is very small. And by small, it is tiny. It's smaller than any land at any of the Disney parks. It is smaller than the Harry Potter lands. It's very much on par, I would say, with the Simpsons lands. If you have seen those at either uh, Universal Orlando or Universal Hollywood. So it's not a very big uh, land down there. Because of that, it can't take a lot of people. And if it reaches capacity, which it does reach capacity fairly often, they will then turn on a virtual queue system that you can get into through a QR code. And then it's going to give you a time to come back and you're going to be able to get back into the land at that point in time. Now, if you do rope drop like we did, we didn't have any problem getting in immediately first thing in the morning. And as a matter of fact, when we walked by a few other times during the day, we did not see them using the virtual queue. So it's obviously not used every day. And that was Labor Day weekend and it was really busy. 
But do know that if it's crazy busy, they will cut people off and then you will enter a virtual queue to get in. But I have never heard anyone not able to get into Super Nintendo Land. So I wouldn't be too worried about it, but you definitely want to try to knock it out first thing in the day. Now, at the end, we will be talking about a rope drop strategy, and I'm going to give you a couple different ones. And one of which is you don't necessarily need to do it first thing in the day because that's where everyone else is going. So we'll talk about that a little bit more, but do know that they have a virtual queue set up if you are not able to get into at that point in time. If you are not familiar with the virtual queue system over at Universal Studios Hollywood, they have QR codes that you can use to scan in. So it is very different from Disney, where on the My Disney Experience app, you can enter the virtual queue through the app. On site over at Universal Hollywood, you actually have to go scan a QR code. It takes you to a third-party site that's going to give you that time that you're going to return and that access there. So you do actually need to go scan them in. Now, at Universal Studios Hollywood, they do have a couple different areas with the virtual queue. They have the Secret Life of Pets. That one's got a virtual queue for its line. You've got the Super Nintendo Land and then Toadstool Cafe. And Toadstool Cafe is the new restaurant inside of Super Mario Land. We were able to go in there. The food is great. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But do know that to get that, you're going to have to do the QR code. And we'll talk about a secret as part of our I can do this all day tips of the day. So we've already talked about Rope Drop, that they take you down. You're going to go past Transformers. When you go in, this land is completely amazing. It's completely immersive. They built the walls up very high. It 100% feels like you are in a Nintendo land where you've got the blocks all around the land. You've got the thump blocks going up and down that are smashing Mario. You can see all the Koopa Troopers around. You've got all the different turtles and turtle shells spinning. You've got the mushrooms and all that. So it's very cool. It's very immersive. But when you go in, you need to know that there's really only one ride and one restaurant. And then there's about a half dozen virtual experiences you can do. Now, you can buy this uh, wristband. It's like a magic band over at Disney uh, that you can wear. It's just a band that obviously interacts with the land and your mobile device. And there are a couple little, I don't even want to call them playgrounds. There's a couple walkthrough areas that you can do uh, things with that band. So if you have the band, by all means, you're going to want to try those out. I can tell you, we did not buy the bands just because it was so busy and those lines were so backed up to do it. And we didn't really see any reason to do it. We, obviously, it's very interactive and there's a lot of cool things you can do. But other than getting points and getting coins on your mobile device, you don't get a lot out of it. So just know that those are available to you if you want to do it. Uh, they do also enhance, I believe, the ride a little bit on the Mario Kart. But I can't speak to that since I didn't get it. So really, when you're going in without the bands, you're really looking at two different things. You've got a restaurant and you've got the ride, the Mario Kart ride. So we went in to go uh, do the ride. And I will tell you, when you get in there, it is very confusing where to go because there are thousands of people everywhere. There are lines and queues all over Super Nintendo Land. And we're looking for the queue to get in line for the Mario Kart. Uh, just know that it is in the back of the land. There is another tube that you will go into to get into that queue. And we believed with as many people that were there that it would be backed up and outside of that tube. And in fact, it wasn't. So you're definitely going to want to go straight back into the very back of Super Nintendo Land. You will see the tube there. You will see the queue for the Mario Kart ride. And usually the queue is inside that tube. Now, if it's backed up and coming outside the tube, obviously that's easy to identify. But when you're getting into the land and you see all the other queues to your sides, that is not for the ride. So go straight back into that tube and you're going to get in line for Mario Kart. Now, when you go through there, I do want to call out something about this queue that really surprised us a lot and is very important, especially if you have people that have mobility issues or maybe in a wheelchair, and that is there are a ton of stairs in this queue. Uh, so when you go into the queue, you're going to wrap around through a Mario land a little bit, and then you're going to go up a series of stairs. And now you're up in this cloud land with digital things of Yoshi going around. And then as you go further through the queue, then you go downstairs again to get on the ride. So we were actually really surprised at how many stairs there were. There are elevators and there is a sign that says if you need accessibility access, you can go take the elevators and there is a cast member there to help. But do know that there are a ton of stairs in this queue and it was very different uh, of an experience than what we've seen in the past. So you're definitely going to want to be aware of that. Now, the ride, once you get through the uh, queue, I'm not going to spoil it and I'm not going to give too much away, but I do want to describe the premise of the ride, what it's like when you're getting on it and what you're going to be going for. So 
The ride's going to go through, it's again, Mario Kart. It's going to go through a lot of the lands that are in the Mario Kart track. So if you have played the game and you're familiar with it, you're going to get on a cart and then you're going to drive through normal land. You're going to go underwater. You're going to fly through the sky. You're going to end up on Rainbow Road, which is amazing. So you're definitely going to want to check that out. But I do want to tell you, do not worry about motion sickness at all. I've seen a couple of reports out there that some people could get motion sickness. You guys know from previous episodes, if you listened, my wife gets motion sickness very easily. She rode this ride and she said this was very easy. It had very little motion in it at all. And all the motion was very slow. And even with the VR goggles on, it didn't throw her off. And she said it was very pleasant. So it's not bad at all for, for motion sickness. As you're driving on the cart, it's going to take some turns. There are some times that it does get hit or spun out, and but when it spins, it doesn't spin, spin. What it does, it'll, it'll turn slowly in one direction, turn slowly back in the other direction. So it's not bad for motion sickness. Now, when you go through the queue, you're going to get uh, this visor thing that you're going to uh, put on your head. And then when you get into the ride, you're going to get the VR goggles that attach to that visor. Uh, and then when you get off, obviously you leave the VR goggles and then you turn the visor back in. Uh, so there is a little bit of logistics, but they explain it very well. It's very easy. Uh, adults, you will need to help your kids with the visor part and getting that clipped onto their head properly and tightened up properly because it is one size fits all and there is an adjustment on there. So I uh, do know that when you get in there, if you are afraid of germs, do know that they sanitize these between every single ride. And then the goggles are not touching you at all. They're hooked onto the visor above you. So you will never really be touching the goggles other than your hand putting them off or on. So you don't need to really worry about that. It does project onto the goggles. That's pretty cool. You do get to see the live version of the ride in addition to a virtual version of the ride at the exact same time. Uh, you are like normal Mario Kart. You do get to shoot some ammo. Uh, so do be prepared for that. And they will tell you as you get into the queue and you're getting ready, you want to look where you're aiming. It's not just an auto aim feature. We're just going to shoot the nearest victim for you. You need to actually turn your head physically and look at what you want to aim at. And that is a really big tip because if you want to earn some points, it's tough to hit some of the bad guys in the ride. You definitely want to make sure that you're turning and looking. And it took me a couple minutes to really hone in on that and to really understand it. You're going to be getting those turtles, your shells that you can shoot. I will tell you, you pick up boxes in every single room that you go into. So keep shooting. Uh, you will eventually run out of ammo. I ran out of ammo a few times, but you do pick it up again. Uh, so there's really not a huge reason to go really sparingly on your ammo and try to save it because you do get it throughout the whole game. Now, the goal of the ride is to score as many coins as you can. So this is very similar to Buzz Lightyear or like a Midway Mania over at Disney where you're getting points and you're competing against the other people in your car and the car that's going against you at the same time. And their goal, and they tell you this as you go through the queue, is to try to get 100 coins. When you get to the end of the ride, I will tell you that the top score for the day was about 202 coins. The top score for the month was like 220 something. And I scored about 150. So it's not difficult to get. I will tell you it would be difficult to get up to that 200 mark. But my very first time riding it, I got 150. And it was a lot of fun. So the, the ride is awesome. After we finish the ride and you come out, you go obviously into the store. The store has those bands if you want to buy those, but they have obviously the Mario shirts, the Luigi shirts. They've got the hats. I even saw some kids walking around some eyebrows on. I don't know if they got them in the store or not, but they've got some cool merchandise. If you are into Mario and Luigi and Nintendo, uh, they do have a couple Bowser items, but not a lot, but you can go through the store and check all that out when you get off the ride. And the land again is a lot of fun. Now, after we finished the ride, we went over to Toadstool Cafe for an early lunch. It was still early in our day, and it is supposed to be quick service. I do know it did take us an hour of waiting in line at Toadstool Cafe to get to the front of the line to even do our order, at which point then you go get a seat. And uh, when you get sat, then they bring you your food to your table. So it does take a little bit of time to get through Toadstool Cafe. I will tell you the food was really good, and I'm actually going to walk you through the food that we ordered since we do talk about food on our other episodes. We did start with the garlic knots. Those are great. Actually, one of the highlights of the meal, so I definitely encourage you, if you like garlic bread and stuff like that, you'll want to try the garlic knots. My wife ordered Bowser's Fireball. Uh, they do warn you when you order it that it is spicy, it is hot. My wife thought, okay, no big deal. It says that the hot sauce comes on the side, and it does. But do know that the meatball itself is cooked with a lot of red pepper flakes, and it itself is very hot. 
In fact, we were joking, that's a spicy meatball, right? Because it definitely fits that Italian theme. It definitely fits the Bowser's Fireball. That's why they call it Bowser's Fireball. Is It is a meatball that is for uh, Bowser with you know his fire breath. So it is very hot. If you have somebody in your family who does not like spicy foods, I would definitely encourage you don't eat it. The waiter told us when he brought it to the table, he said, good luck with it. I've never seen anyone finish it. And obviously we did not finish it either. It is that spicy and it's a one pound meatball. So it's a lot of food, but it's a unique treat that you can get. So if you have somebody who loves spicy food and likes that kind of stuff, then Bowser's Fireball Challenge is probably for you. But we did try it out. It was good. I enjoyed it, but it was very spicy. So do be warned of that. My daughter got the Mario burger. I tried that as well. It was good, but it was pretty plain. So if you've listened to our other episodes, we talk a lot about that the hamburgers, hot dogs, pizza, chicken nuggets are very consistent throughout all the parks. This was very similar. It's a consistent hamburger. It's nothing special. It's it's not like this gourmet hamburger. It's just a regular hamburger with some bacon and mushrooms on it. And it was good, but it was very plain. I got Toad's short rib, actually, which was really good. And in fact, the three of us agreed this was the best entree that we got. It's a like a pot roast type short rib on top of mashed potatoes with some gravy and some other flavors around it. And that was really good. It wasn't a huge meal. So do know that if you're going in hungry, it's probably not going to fully fill you up. But if you get the garlic knots, if you get a dessert, you're going to be fine. So Toad's short rib was really good. We also got the Princess Peach Cupcake which was amazing. It was one of the best cupcakes I've ever had at a park. But I will tell you that uh, your kids are going to love it, but it was way too much frosting. Uh, You're talking inches of frosting on top of this cupcake. And it was very rich. It's a buttercream frosting. It tasted great, but we couldn't finish it. We actually cut the cupcake into quarters and each of us took a quarter and I couldn't finish mine because it was just too much sugar. But it is also jelly filled and it's like a confetti cake. So it was a really good cupcake. I do encourage you to get that. They also have a tiramisu, and then they have a layered cake. I I, I think they call it the flagpole cake, but they had a layered cake that has some tea on the top. And I'm not a coffee or tea drinker, so we didn't try either of those desserts, but we love the Princess Peach Cupcake. They also have a special drink there called the Superstar Lemon Squash, which is basically the best way I can describe it is it's like lemonade with some Sprite, and then it's got some boba in the bottom with some mango. It's very fruity. It's good. If you don't enjoy the bulba and getting things sucked up your straw into your mouth, I will tell you, you probably won't love it, but the kids are going to like it. My daughter liked it. I liked it. My wife was a little hesitant, but after she tasted it, she actually said it's pretty good. She just doesn't love bulba and uh, the bulba, the huge straws in the bulba coming up into your mouth. I do know that it's there. It's nowhere near as good as butterbeer. I will tell you that today. Butterbeer is better, but uh, they do have the superstar lemon squash. With that, the the restaurant is good. We had a great time there. It's very well themed. The food's awesome. So you definitely want to try that out. Now, I'm going to tell you, how does this change rope drop? Because I talked about that at the top of the episode. So I'm going to give you two options. And then I'm going to give you our two, I can do this all day tips of the day. So first, when you're going to rope drop, you can do like we did or everyone else did. And if you want to guarantee that you get in there and you can ride that Mario Kart ride as quickly as possible. And we waited about an hour, just so you know. You can rope drop uh, Super Nintendo Land. So obviously you'll be stopped at the top of the escalators. You're going to go down with the other thousands of people. And then you're going to make a beeline for that land and go right into the ride. And I would encourage you to start your day there if you want to guarantee that you can do it and get it done for the day without it being broken down or anything else. That's what everyone else in the park is doing. That's where the crowds are going. And like Disney parks in general or other famous parks, you're going to find that the majority of the crowd goes to the same ride. So at Universal Orlando at Islands of Adventure, everyone goes to Hagrid's Motorbike. Over at Universal Studios Orlando, everyone is now going to go to the Minions and the Villain Con that we talked about on one of our previous episodes. And that's where the crowd's going to start out there. When you go to Disney, we've talked about this at Animal Kingdom, everyone goes to Flight of Passage. Over at Epcot, everyone's going to be going to Ratatouille. Over at Magic Kingdom, they're all going to go to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. And at Hollywood Studios, everyone goes to Rise of Resistance. So it's very similar in that nature that everyone's going to go to Super Nintendo Land. So you can do that like everyone else. And if you're towards the front of the crowd, you're going to have a relatively short wait. Do know that the wait gets up to about three hours. So if you're at the back of the crowd or maybe you're running a little bit late, then I'm going to advise you go for the second strategy. And the reason is 
the rest of the rides in the park for the first, I'd say almost two hours had no line, meaning the wait times were five to 10 minutes at every single other ride in the park. And if you went really quickly to those rides, you would be able to knock out the rest of the park without any problem at all. And then you would be able to save your entire afternoon to go to Super Nintendo Land. If I were to do that, I would probably start with uh, Secret Life of Pets and the Minion Mayhem ride over there on that side of the park. Those are going to be busier later in the day. And then from there, I would go straight over to the Harry Potter land and that out. And from there, it's going to be up to you. It's going to be a judgment call. Do you want to go down and knock out Jurassic Park, Transformers, and The Mummy? Or do you want to go do the Studio Backlot Tour? Now, the Studio Backlot Tour is our favorite ride in the park. We hit it late in the afternoon, the day that we were there, and it was only about an hour wait to get on it at that point in time. And it's about an hour long ride. So it's about two hours in total. Now, at that point that we knocked out most of the other rides. So you could go knock out all these other rides, knock out all these weights, and then save that studio tour for some time in the middle of the day or later in the day and still do Super Nintendo Land. So those are your two options. Either go straight to Super Nintendo Land and knock it out with everyone else, or try to knock out every other ride you can and save Super Nintendo Land for later in the day. And when we did check back later in the day, the wait times were less than two hours, but they were still pretty lengthy. Okay. Now, you can still skip some of that wait. And I'm going to tell you how with our two, I can do this all day tips of the day. So our very first tip of the day is Mario Kart has a single rider line. And you need to know if you've listened to our other episodes, we will always advocate for a single rider line. You need to use it every single time you can. And if you think about it, so you're with your family, you've got a big group and you guys all want to be together. You can wait in line together. It just means that when you get to the ride, you're all going to ride it separately. Or maybe sometimes two of you could end up going together, but you're going to ride it separately. Now, when you're in the ride, I don't know about you or anyone else. I'm not sitting there holding the hand of the person next to me. Now, if you've got a little kid, I would encourage you probably don't do single rider. But if your kids are generally 10 or over, then I would go do single rider and it's going to shorten your weight significantly. So when you walk in through the tube, you're going to see a couple different signs that talk about the queue. It shows you where the accessibility is and the elevators for the handicapped people. But there is a sign right there for single rider. Being a car that holds four people, it is very often that these cars are not full. So the single rider line should go very quickly compared to the normal queue. So I do want you to use that and get through Super Nintendo Land as quick as you can if you do go in the morning and then come back out and knock out the rest of the lower lot. And the reason is all the other rides for the, about the first two hours had about a five to 10 minute wait. After the first two hours of the day, they all jumped up to an hour because everybody was coming out of Super Nintendo Land and hitting those rides. So you can really kill two birds with one stone if you go and do single rider. Our second tip of the day, Reservations for Toadstool Cafe are near impossible to get. You can only get them on site when you're in the park. And the only way to get them is through scanning the QR code. Now, I will tell you, when we got into the park, we wanted to go to Toadstool Cafe. We were in there early, but the QR code is downstairs in Super Nintendo Land. Before Rope Drop even happened, we got a notification on the Universal Hollywood app that said Toadstool Cafe reservations are already full for the day. So we completely missed our opportunity to get a reservation. Now, because I have some tips and tricks that I know some people, I was still able to get into Toadstool Cafe, but know that if the reservations are full, you are not going to be able to get in. So here is my tip, and this is how you're going to get into Toadstool Cafe. Before you go to Universal, I encourage you, have a friend or family member go online, or you can do this, and you're going to uh, Google the QR code for Toadstool Cafe. And I found a handful of sites that had the picture of the QR code. So you're going to get that picture and you're going to save it to your phone. And then the second you get to Universal and you go through the turnstiles, I want you to use someone else's phone and scan the QR code on your phone. So that way you can go ahead and make your reservation without going all the way down to uh, the Super Nintendo land. You're going to have to do it early in the day and you're going to have to do it very quickly. But by having the QR code yourself before you get into the park, you're going to be able to secure those reservations without having to go down there and find the QR code and scan it. So if you want to go to Toadstool Cafe, I recommend get that QR code online and then scan it as soon as you get into the park without having to go down there. With that, we wish you a magical week as you're planning your next vacation. And we do encourage you to tune into us next week as we continue in our series. Uh, we're going to be talking about over the next few weeks. So today we covered 
Super Nintendo Land. We're going to talk about the Cirque Drawn to Life show at Disney Springs. We're going to give you a parking tip over at Disney Springs that actually I wasn't going to do, but a lot of people said that I needed to do. So we are going to be highlighting that for you as well. And then I'm going to be talking about the great movie escape rooms over at Universal Orlando. Those are awesome as well. So we've got some cool episodes coming up for you. So you're going to want to tune into those and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.